Hello, I'm Ian Mitchell and I'm the product trainer for Ransoms Jacobson. Welcome to our new video series of How To. This series of videos should take you through the basics of how to set up cutting units, groomers, rear roller brushes, verticut reels and rotary decks. The intention is to give you the basics so that you can get the best out of your turf machinery. Today we want to cover setting up the Jacobson Greens unit. So here I've got an example of the brand new Jacobson True Set cutting unit based on the classic Jacobson reel which has been around for some 90 years uh, with very few changes. The changes on this cutting unit are in the cylinder to bottom blade adjustment and we'll run through those with you. What we want to cover in this sequence is adjusting the cylinder and the bottom blade so the unit cuts effectively. To do that I've got some essential tools, I've got the spanners I'm going to be using, I've got a height of cut bar so I can set my cutting unit up, I've got a strip of setting paper so I can set the cylinder accurately and because I'll be working with the cutting cylinder which is sharp and the bottom blade I've also got a pair of gloves to protect myself. In order to set the cutting cylinder on to cut I'm going to tip the unit up on its back and I've got a block of wood to allow me to get the cutting unit at the right angle. Okay, now my cutting unit is safe and stable, I can work on it safely. Instead of using my hands to turn the cylinder, I've got a 9 16 socket on the side here so that I can rotate the cylinder without using my fingers. I don't want to get cut because this unit is very sharp. To check the adjustment, I'm going to use a single sheet of paper, setting paper, which we um, have printed here. It's standard photocopier printing paper, nothing particularly fa fancy about it. We produce them in a book size, making it convenient for us to use. The correct adjustment is to use this piece of paper like a feeler gauge, and we measure an air gap between the bottom blade and the cutting cylinder so we don't create any heat or friction when the unit is working. On my cutting cylinder, the cylinder blade is in a helix shape and the, each individual blade will touch at this end first so we refer to this as the leading edge and we should always start our adjustments at this side. This end of the blade is referred to as the trailing edge because it is the last part of the blade to pass the bottom blade. It's important that I set here so that I don't get any banging or knocking or any damage. So using my piece of paper, I'm going to adjust the clearance so that this becomes a smooth sliding fit between the two surfaces. Using a half inch spanner socket in this case, I can now bring that cylinder down and adjust the clearance so that I get a sliding fit, just gripping the paper, give me a perfect clearance. I repeat that now on the trailing edge of the cylinder. So I've got clearance at the moment. A couple of clicks on my easy adjuster, giving me a smooth sliding fit. Now using the same piece of paper, instead of entering the paper between the two blades horizontally, I'm going to put it in vertically and see if I cut. And I get a clean cut across the full width of my cutting unit. This unit is now set. Okay, in this section we want to cover setting the height of cut. The height of cut is something which changes at different times of the year and to suit different grass conditions. 
or it may be that you change the height of cut to work on a different part of the course. Setting the height of cut is a very simple process. We have got an adjuster at either side of the front roller and a clamping screw at either side as well. To make an adjustment we need to release the two clamping screws and turn the adjusters at the top. The adjusters on top are made from plastic. If I try and force the adjustment without releasing the clamping screw, I break the adjuster. It's designed like that to prevent us forcing this and distorting the frame or breaking the thread or causing damage to the cutting unit. So we're now going to actually set the height of cut on this unit. To do that, I'm going to flip the unit over onto its back so I can access underneath. To make the unit stable when it's rolled over, I'm going to use my block of wood again. Picking the cutting unit up and rolling it over on its back. Once the unit is down, I need to check to make sure that it's safe and stable so I can work on it safely. To check the adjustment, I'm going to use a standard height of cut bar. The height of cut bar has got two screws to it. The front screw, which faces down, is to measure the depth of a turf groomer. And the second screw, where the head is underneath the bolt, is designed to allow me to accurately set my mowing height. I'm going to use a six inch rule to adjust my height of cut bar. Release the top screw, I can measure the distance from the bottom of the bar to underside the screw head and set that to five millimeters. Turn the screw until I get the desired height, hold it, lock it into place and check. I'm going to place the bar with the screw at the top and I need to keep it there. What I mustn't do is to turn the setting bar round as I'm setting different cutting units because if there is any bend or distortion in the bar I'd get an inaccurate reading. So the idea is that the cutting blade sits underneath that screw head and gives me an accurate measurement between the front the rear and the front roller and the underside of the screw head. Put my gloves on again because I shall be working close to the cylinder. I don't want to cut my fingers. I can now check. What I'm looking for is a smooth sliding fit. Not forcing the screw under the blade and bending it, but I'm looking for a smooth easy fit at either end of my cutting unit. If it doesn't go, I need to make an adjustment and I do that with my half inch spanner. I release the clamping screws at the side of the cutting unit make the required adjustment until I have the smooth sliding fit that I'm after clamp the unit and check again. Normally there will be some minor movement when you tighten up the clamping screws and it's very important that that be checked. And I'm again looking for a smooth sliding fit at either end of my cutting unit. So it's quick, it's simple and it's easy. Having set the height of cut we must remember that there is a big difference between bench height and actual height when we're cutting out on the turf. The cutting unit will sink into the turf, the amount of sinkage will vary from green to green and with different growing conditions, different times of the year. So when we're selecting our height of cut it's important that we remember that what we set on the bench won't necessarily be what we achieve on the turf. We now have the cutting unit sitting on a soft piece of neoprene which represents turf. 
The ground is not as solid as the workbench, so now we've gone from a bench set height of cut to an effective height of cut. And here, the rollers have sunk into the soft material at either side, and that has changed our actual mowing height to much closer from the surface here to the edge of the bottom blade. So we are much, much closer here, and that would represent the effective mowing height of your mower when it's cutting across the green. So just because you have a bench adjustment at five or six millimetres doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get the same height of cut when you're out on the grass.